the mighty and resilient Merrimack River, carving through the communities of our great region. My name is Linda Lorden, proud president of Merrimack County Savings Bank. And like the river that serves as our namesake, we're a constant yet ever-changing presence. Because to us, it's bigger than banking. It's about powering communities and putting people first. It's about knowing where you came from and where you're going. That's Merrimack style. Visit us at themerrimack.com. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I decided that we would start today's podcast with a little trivia question. Do you have your thinking cap on? Yes, I do. Okay. The surge protector. You know what that is. Yeah, that strip thing that you plug into the wall and then you plug our other things into that thing. And then it has like that little button that you push to turn it all on or off. Yeah. yeah. That thing. Okay. It was invented in 1970. Okay. Now, this is something that you're going to want to remember because you're going to want to use this like at parties and family reunions to impress all your family members and friends. You're just going to – people are going to look at you, Andrew, and they're going to go, oh, my gosh. I I can't believe I'm in his presence. He's so amazingly intelligent. And there is okay. no better way to impress someone than to talk about surge protectors. This is correct. <laughs> okay. So what was the official name when it was first invented? Was it A, Zap Trap, B, Power Devour, C, Wat Wad, or D, Shock Block? Okay. Was it Zap Trap? Power Devour, Wat Wad, or Shock Block? So Wat Wad sounds, uh, sounds dirty. So I'm going to say no to that one. <laughs> and then Shock, what was the fourth one? Shock Block. Shock Block. That's the one I like. I'm going with that one. If I was sitting at a board meeting and those were presented to me, that's the one I would pick. Y- you want to try again? <sighs> Is it A? Is it Zap Trap yeah. or Power Devour? Zap Trap. Is it Zap Trap? Yes. Okay. I knew you knew the answer. It Zap only took Trap. Me three right. attempts. Okay. That was the name that Harold P. Cop of Buffalo, New York, said this is what he wanted to name his invention. I kind of wish that would have stuck around. I mean, instead of like Surge Protector, hey, I need a Zap Trap. It does sound silly, though. Surge Protector sounds more mature. If you want to protect your things, you need a Surge Protector. <laughs> <laughs> you know where you can buy them now? Everywhere? Dollar store? At the Om Depot. <laughs> you messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> At the Om Department. Wait a minute. Hold on. No, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> we, can edit, oh. we can edit that in post. It's not like this is live streaming. <laughs> It'll be seamless once we're done. Oh, I should have just a long phase after that. <laughs> <laughs> She's on a roll. <laughs> They're all just so funny. So funny. <laughs> so funny. On that happy note, welcome. I'm Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess here with you. And this is called Kim Commando Today. See how that works. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's our Monday, Wednesday, fun, Friday podcast about all things digital. And joining me, of course, is Andrew Babinski. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Kim. And so what do you have for us today? Mr. Beast may be the most powerful man on the internet, but... When it comes to streaming, he may be in trouble. Oh, really? Mr. like 300 million followers? Yeah, it's not good. All the news about Mr. Beast in the last three weeks has been all negative. That is not good. That is not good. Hey, uh, just a quick reminder that if this is truly your last chance to enter to win that $1,000 vacation gift card. That's it. We are ending it. Yes. And so you have to go to winfromkim.com, winfromkim.com, okay. because I have to like have a little break before we start the next contest. Now, the okay. next one's going to be crazy because we're going to be giving away a brand new iPhone 16. I mean, wow. that's going to be – everybody's going to want to enter that. That's going to bring all the boys to the yard. Everybody wants an iPhone. Maybe then that's and when so, I'll sign up. Well, you know what? You don't want an iPhone because you have that – I'm I don't done know, with what it. Is that? I hate it. Huh? I hate it. Do you? I do. Why? The only reason I hate it, this is the only reason I hate it, is because I've been using an iPhone for a decade, and it just slows my productivity down. 
things that I could do with video editing and social media posting that I could do super fast, lightning quick. It just slows me down. See, I thought you were going to be really happy with it. I mean, I even gave you like a shot about saying like, you're my only green bubble friend. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, if I had the chance, and I can, I guess I got, I got it at Costco and they have a 90 day return, but I traded in a phone. I don't even know how that works. I'll maybe investigate it. But 90 days for a cell phone is pretty crazy. Yeah, that is. Uh, can you do our pitch to like, comment, share, follow, good stuff like that? Yes. If you are enjoying this intense in conversation about returning things to Costco, <laughs> just simply comment. Go Costco below the video or like the video, share. And don't forget to, to subscribe. The YouTube will remind you if you're watching on YouTube. They'll remind you every single time we go live, which is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if you share it, it helps the algorithm. It helps grow the show so we can keep doing it. And if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, th this doesn't mean that this does not apply to you. No. We would love for you to uh, leave some great reviews about our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we also have a, uh, a really interesting interview uh, with a woman whose ring camera was hacked while her five-year-old son uh, was sleeping. So you don't want to miss that. Literally a nightmare for any parent. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. hundred percent. All right. Here are some things that just kind of ran across my screen that I thought you might be interested in. I read a story on, over at CNBC about a gentleman by the name of Chris Pyle. Okay. Chris Pyle was a transmission tech at Ford Motor Company. And there he was making $75,000 a year. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Decent job. Um, then he started thinking to himself, well, you know, I wonder what else I could do. And then he ran across a website where now he's making $170,000 a year. Okay. okay. He quit his job at Ford. Okay. <laughs> and what he does is he goes over to justanswer.com and he answers questions about uh, engines and transmissions and cars. Oh, wow. And that's what he does. So he has a specialty, a niche, which is in need. And that's what why he's doubled his salary. Like this, anyone can't just walk over there and do that. You have to have a specialty, right? Yeah, and you know what? And they're always looking for different type of areas. Like I was over on the site this morning. They're looking for people who know a lot of things about appliances, okay. home improvement, for example. Uh, travel is always another category. So he's making on average fourteen thousand two hundred dollars a month. Now he does say he worked less when he worked at Ford. He was working forty hours a week. Uh, now he works eight to 10 hours a day, seven days a week, but he says he gets to set his own schedule. He can be present for his family. And I was telling Barry about this. I am totally signing him up. Okay. <laughs> for the ham radio division? Yes. Yeah. I told him. I said, you know, you can answer any question about ham radio that anybody wants to throw out. But this will not be profitable because even if Barry works eight to 10 hours a day, that's going to be him just answering one question. Oh, yeah. It's going to be the entire encyclopedia. Yeah, you're right. I got to talk to him about like brevity. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes when he's telling me a story, I actually, I know this is so rude, but you know, we've been married almost 25 years. So mm -hmm. I get to do this is that he'll start explaining something to me and I'm like, you're losing me. You're losing me. I am, I'm, I'm off the planet right now. Okay. You started talking <laughs> about a grocery list and now you're telling me the history of the Walmart store. We can move on. <laughs> Quick question, though, back to this guy's gig. Is it a gig economy thing? Does he get paid per answer, or is this a salaried yes. position? Oh, no, no, no. He gets paid per answer. Okay. Totally. Just totally gig. But think about that. $170,000 a year. Uh, he has bought, I don't know, I was reading like 30 acres of land in Tennessee. He's building a second home. He has an RV. His wife used to be a nurse. She doesn't work anymore. She's homeschooling the kids. I mean- his whole life has yeah. just changed because of the ability to answer questions about uh, engines. And he does have quite a few certifications, I should add. What a phenomenal success story. That's great. Yeah, we're trying to get him on the show. All right. Uh, when's the last time you went to a dentist? I don't know, seven months ago. Okay. So imagine if you sat in the chair and you're leaning back and instead of like a little hot – Hi, Janice, that comes over and says, oh, hi, Andrew. Mm -hmm. How are you? I like this. Love so. your radio show. Like, the, like where this is going. 
Okay. Or, and then after she makes sure that everything's good to go, and uh, she took those x-rays, or we like to call them toothpicks. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Then the... (laughs) Yeah. Then what happened? That was a that was a good one. You <laughs> gotta admit that one was all right. Okay, uh, okay. Then the dentist comes in and and he or she says to you, you know, we're sorry to tell you, but you need um, two dozen root canals or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh no, really? And they said, you know what? But don't worry about it. We have a new dentist to help out. So you just lean back and just trust the process. And so you lean back, you open your mouth, and then this mechanical arm comes over your face and then just goes right into your mouth, and it's a robotic dentist. That's pretty cool. Would that would that bother you? No, as long as I don't have to hear the dentist say I don't floss enough, because they're so mean about it. If that goes away, I'll deal with a robot dentist. I know flossing. I guess it's overrated. I don't know. I just I don't do it. <laughs> but they say it every time, regardless of how much you floss. Oh, you can tell you you only uh, just floss the teeth you want to save. If I hear that one more time, <laughs> <laughs> next time you go in, say, "Are you going to give me an X-ray or some toothpicks?" <laughs> <laughs> I am. That's a good one. Would you use a robot um, dentist? Um. Well, I'm hesitating because my dentist is a friend of mine, okay? And I've known him for, oh gosh, probably like 30 years. Okay. Uh, and so I last time I went in, he's like, okay, so you know, you know, we do have to do some work on a tooth in the back. And, and he said, and I'm going to give you some Novocaine. And he said, do you have to do a show afterwards? I said, oh, no. He said, yeah, okay, good, good. So I just want to make sure, you know, we're going to just numb up your mouth so you don't feel anything. And he, and then he said to me, because you know, and, um, you know, aside from that, he goes, some women have a different sensation when they get Novocaine. And I said, really, what is that? He goes, you know, some, some women feel like their breasts are being fondled. <laughs> <laughs> he Thank said, but that's God just perfectly normal. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, a robot would never do that. A <laughs> no, robot dentist is never going to inappropriately touch you. <laughs> I just thought, what a great line that is. <laughs> I wonder what dentists have to think about this. I mean, obviously, if this is the future, this is going to replace some jobs. Or do they see it as, now I can just check all the, the patients and deal with just patient care and all the dirty work is done by the robot? You know, I could see like tooth cleanings, you know, yeah. teeth cleaners rather. I mean, I think that would be, that should be robotic. There's no reason why you have to have somebody like do that. But I just wish they would figure out how to like get rid of that sound. Ooh. The scraping? I just, I, yeah. Yeah. And the drill sound. They, you know, it's like even though when they put headphones on you and you kind of zone out, it's still like, ooh. Yeah. Yuck. All right. Uh, NASA is officially working on a commercial aircraft with speeds between Mach 2 and Mach 4. Which, you know what that is, miles per hour. Of course I do. But if you want to explain it to everybody else who doesn't, that'd be great. It's between 1,500 and 3,000 miles an hour. Could you imagine that? No. Getting on a commercial aircraft going anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000 miles per hour? What's a plane fly at? Like 500, 600 miles an hour? Uh, maybe if you're lucky. Okay. You know, 400. It depends on... Your altitude, things like that. All right, let's say 400. I mean, that's 10 times faster. You could go from New York City to London in a little under an hour and a half. That's crazy. Okay. Go from New York to Los Angeles in, say, maybe an hour and 40 minutes. Which is what it takes now to get from Phoenix to Vegas. <laughs> or from Phoenix to Mesa. Yeah, <laughs> it might be. I always oh, love man, the- that's... You know, that's so fast that your in-flight peanuts are going to catch up with you, the baggage claim. <laughs> you know, so. That was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you have to see this, finally. Um, you don't, you got rid of your dogs because you're, you just didn't want them anymore. Well, my daughter was terrified of them. Oh, why? I, she just was. She wasn't afraid of the big dog, but the little puppies, she just, they were energetic really? 
And now that I'm working later in the day, they were in their kennels all day long. It just wasn't it wasn't oh. a perfect home for them. That's not fair. No, or, you know that's not fair. Uh, so an indoor cam caught a dog chewing on a lithium ion battery, a power bank, which set the house on fire. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, The flame spread through the living room in minutes. The family and all the pets got out safely. But here, check out this video. Look at this. All right. He's got the pack. He's laying down on his little doggy bed. And he's chewing. chewing, Using those back teeth. There's another dog just jealous that he's not chewing on a battery. Oh, could me? I see why the fire started now because he's laying on that big flammable foam cushion. That thing's going to ignite. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's like a fireworks show. Man. Don't just stare at it. Yeah, they're just staring at it like, ooh. But you know what? These dogs are smart. They, They eventually get out through the doggy door. Yeah, I mean, they smell the smoke and they run. Oh, look at that. That that is starting the whole house on fire. You're right. It is. That is tragic. So, um, little PSA for you here on Kim Commando today. Uh, don't let your uh, dogs, human or otherwise, uh, chew on lithium-ion power banks. No. Put that stuff away. Mm-mm. Not good. Hey, by the way, in case you want to share this video, we have it linked over at commando.com. Also, I think it's in our YouTube channel as well. I'll have to ask Matt. Uh, but it really, it's really something that you, I just wanted everybody to see, to be aware of. Because a lot of people are like, oh, they'll never go on fire. What's real? How could that happen? It does. I'll stop chewing on them as well, now that I know the risk. Hey, it's Kim Commando today. It's your fun podcast about all things digital. And in case you're wondering, this is not the Kim Commando show that's heard on, I don't know, thousands and thousands of radio stations. Uh, And for the first time ever, you can now get the Kim Commando show as a podcast with commercials or commercial free. So wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with a K, of course. And that's the Kim Commando show. You're going to love it. And it's different than the podcast. See, the podcast is a place where, you know, I deal with Andrew. Um, (laughs) Yeah. yeah. He's like, he's, in case you're wondering, I mean, you know, we don't have a big budget here. So no. he's like the best we could afford. At the time. We're kind of <laughs> I don't know why I tell people to like and follow. The minute this thing gets popular, I'm out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to bring in Mr. Beast or something like that. Boom. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. All right. So do you have um, cams in the kids' rooms? I don't. I don't have any inside cameras because, honestly, I'm worried about being hacked and someone oh, being yeah. able to, yeah, I don't want, but I have cameras all around the outside of my house. Well, we have cameras inside and outside. Um, and, you know, if I had a kid, I would definitely put a camera inside the kid's bedroom just so that you'd be alerted if they, you know, they get up, you know, they, they want to go out to see their friends at, you know, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand. I understand how they could be a positive, absolutely. Um, but I don't have any inside. Well, I read about a Charlie McLeod, and she lives in, in Colleen, Texas, and she wants to make sure that her little boy, just cute little guy, five years old, is safe at night. So she set up a rain cam in his bedroom, and then one night she gets a notification. Now, Ashari is here with us to tell us the whole story. So what happened when you got that notification? So the notification was a motion sensor. So it lets us know when he gets up and he moves. Um, When I got that notification, I logged into the camera to see if he was just, you know, tossing a turning or if he had gotten up out of the bed. Um, When I logged in, when you immediately log into the ring, it is muted. So you have to unmute it to hear the sound. I unmuted it and I saw him sitting there looking at the camera frantically. I knew something was wrong. Um, And then immediately after I muted it, I hear this male's voice saying hello to him. Um, Because my son was sitting there looking frantically, I'm assuming that the guy had said something prior to me logging in, which woke up my son. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can see my son backing up frantically. And it did sound like my husband. So I turn over. I look at my husband. He was sleeping. 
but I thought maybe because he was turned over on the other side of the bed, I thought maybe he had, you know, when the motion went off, he was talking to him. I said, hey, are you talking to him through the camera? He goes, no, I just went to sleep. I said, there's a male talking to our son through the camera. And he's up, like, standing next to the bed. And he was like, what? So my husband immediately jumps off the bed because we're thinking somebody's in the house or something. My husband immediately jumps off the bed. I still am on the live watching. My son is going, daddy, daddy, because he thought it was his daddy. And then he realizes it's not daddy. And he oh frantically, panically backs into the wall and then he runs out of the room. And we met him in the living room because we were running in at the same time. Immediately took the camera down, took the battery out. So we had two in the home. So there was one in my son's room for nighttime um, because we were trying to get him to sleep in his bed. And then there was another one in like a breezeway like area of our house so that we could see if he did get up and walk. If the other motion camera would catch him too. And we would know he was walking towards the living room. But the scariest thing ever. And my son is traumatized. Wow. That's, that is nuts. So now, I had heard that you went onto the Ring Camera app and then that video was gone? It's gone. So my instincts kicked in immediately when the recording did everything and when the Ring Camera, the motion went off. I immediately saved the video because it immediately, when you log in, it immediately starts saving that timestamp. I immediately saved it to my phone. And then when I got back in it, because my husband was trying to look to look at the timestamp of like, it, and we were trying to see if the guy was already talking prior to that, trying to get a video of prior to, video was gone. Like it never even happened. And literally what saved as proof when we went to the police department is the fact that I saved that video in that exact moment. Now, when you talk to your son, did your son describe what was said prior to you tuning in to the camera? No, all he kept saying was, is daddy at work? Is daddy at work? So I'm assuming that this is not probably the first time that may have maybe the guy hacked into it like the night prior or something and maybe had asked where my husband was. And my son he knows like during the day and or maybe asking, hey, was daddy or something? And my son was like, daddy's at work. So, so my son kept saying, all he kept saying was, daddy's at work. Is daddy at work? And he was looking at my husband. He said, daddy, you talking to me on the camera from work? Wow. And my son's like, my dad, my husband's like, no, uh, that wasn't daddy. And he was like, that's all he kept saying. Wow. That is that is frightening. Now, of course, you took it to the police. And what did, what did they say? So they said how it happened was our router that we got, which is new because we just signed up for this Internet service provider. Typically, when service providers set up your router, they say that, that they do not set up a blocker on it um, so that you can't be hacked. People can't get into your router system. They stated that, that ours was unlocked and that is how we were able to get hacked on top of once they had hacked into our router, they were able to hack into our ring because our ring was hooked up to the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So they said so, that that's how they got in. So they're trying to trace the IP address to see if the person's near or if it was, you know, someone far away. So they're still working on trying to trace. Well, so so basically, you know, you got a new router, and unless you change the default password, it, is that any? Yeah, I mean, everybody can. Yeah, anybody can can tap into that. Uh, there's actually some places on the internet, and this is really frightening. That um, where I guess people with too much time on their hands, uh, well, they'll actually like post ways to get into unprotected networks, routers. And then just for fun and for entertainment, that's what people do. I mean, I, you're, I'm looking at your face. You're like, why would anybody do that? I know. It's it's just kind of nuts, though, that they do this. It's like it's like you might watch Netflix and they're going to go try to torment a, a little boy in his bedroom. And it's traumatizing to that. I mean, I know sick people don't think about anything like that in reference to what you're doing long term to a child when you do something like that. Um, but it's now, you know, a long term. If somebody had that, like for us, it was a safety precautionary measure of nighttime, you know, so we could watch him if he got up or anything. And it was a protection thing, we thought. Now it kind of backfired on us. And now he's 
doesn't even want to be in his room at all, which is understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, he's traumatized, closing doors. Um, but for somebody to sell people's information like that and it's a fun thing for you, that's just it's sick. It Kim, is sick. Especially when you look at that video and you see how traumatized in that yeah. video that my son was. Now, Kim, correct me if I'm wrong. If they have the IP, they can just look it up. They can do a, a who is search on the IP, right? To find out where it, it's coming from. Uh, there may be logs inside the router. Okay. That's where we, yeah, that's where we were informed. Yeah, the log. Yeah, there, yeah, there could be logs. And then, you know, the ISP may be able to track where that uh, traffic also originated from. And, you know, with the IP address, uh, you can get down to the granule level. If nothing else, you get down to maybe within a couple of houses. So it's pretty easy to find something. You know, a lot of people don't realize that when they get on the Internet, they may think that they're anonymous uh, when really you leave all these little digital cookies along the way. Um, well, you know what? Thanks for uh, telling us your story and thanks for coming on because, you know, it serves as a warning, you know, for a lot of folks is that number one is that if, you know, if you do get a new router, you do need to lock it down. The same thing with your ring camera and because there's just uh, – it's uh, it's like whack-a-mole, you know. Mm-hmm. There are just so many different hackers, scammers, weirdos, crackpots on the internet, which, uh, you know, th- this could be their form of entertainment. But at the same time, you use the word traumatize it, you know. It's going to take a while for your little guy to get over this, I'm sure. And just as you were trying to get him to sleep in his own bed, yeah. he's – back (laughs) yeah not just way back that's that's not even an option now yeah (laughs) well we've all been there eventually they do go to their own bed they do i assure you might be in his might be in his early 20s but he is going to go to his (laughs) own bed (laughs) (laughs) not that long (laughs) oh man i'll tell you now here's another thing that i learned from kim commando that could help i have a mesh network so my router is connected to the mesh network and then everything in my house is connected to the mesh network. So if someone did want to do this exact same thing, they would have to get through the router, then through the mesh network to then connect to the camera, correct? Uh not necessarily. No. No. Uh once you once you're in the network, you are in the network. Okay. Even though so, everything that's all the devices are connected to the the mesh network and that's password protected. Well, yours is. Hers was not. Right. Okay. And so that's that's basically what the problem is. If she got a new router, she just plugged that sucker in and said, ooh, happy day, we're online. Right. You know, and it's not really her fault because, you know, these things, they don't always come with step-by-step instructions. So I don't know if that was the case. Uh, and unless you know that this is happening – you probably don't even think about it. Right. Uh, especially like if you have an older router, a lot of people say, oh, I don't need a new router because, you know, this one's worked fine for 10 years. Well, it has the worst security known to mankind. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but this is why we are so incredibly popular. You know, you know, <laughs> people stop me on the street and they say, how do you do this every single day? They do. The hordes. We have to hold them out. There's people, a whole group of people outside just waiting to ask you that question right now. Well, I was actually out front checking the landscaping. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy um, taking a picture of himself, taking a selfie in front of the sign. And so, um, and he looked at me and he's like, (laughs) gave me like that goldfish look like, like, look at her. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Sign. Real? Sign? (laughs) And then I thought... And then I was thinking, like, oh, maybe I should go over and, like, say, hey, you want to take a picture? But then yeah. I thought, you know, it's 120 degrees out. <laughs> you didn't go over and say hi? <laughs> I did wave, and I said hi. Uh, and and then I thought, I'm out here by myself, and I don't know who he is. And Yeah, he was a fan enough to stop and take a picture of a sign. You're right. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I'm just... You know, as Barry likes to call me, the cash cow. Yeah, we gotta protect it. Hey, it's Kim Commando. Today it's your fun podcast about all things digital. And if you're listening to the podcast on your walk and or maybe you're driving or you're shopping, you're doing the gardening, whatever it may be, and you're just laughing out loud, well, that means that you need to tell somebody about the podcast, Kim Commando Today. Just one person. That's all. Just one person makes a difference.
Right, Andrew? We don't spend any money on marketing. So we're relying on you to market <laughs> this for us. And we appreciate it when you do. We do, because we don't have a marketing budget. We and, might one day. And you know, this thing that we say, it works. When I logged onto the Facebook uh, video, I think it was Facebook, last week, right after the show, because I wanted to see something I I wanted to see that bit we did about the, uh, you know, the endowed Olympic athlete, because I thought it was pretty funny. So I didn't want to watch it again. And there was like 45 say, uh, shares. Oh, that's good. Yeah. We need, we need 450. Oh. That's what we need. All right. <laughs> Okay. So you did a bad job, people. <laughs> no, 45 is a good start. <laughs> it is. But we need more. It's better we need than more, nothing. more, 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 more. Because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of competition mm-hmm. out there. And uh, the algorithms, how they work, big tech, is that accordingly, the more people that like it and comment and share, then the algorithm goes, oh, this must be really good stuff. So I should push that out. So that's why we always say like, comment, share. And we really that's, sincerely that's, appreciate it. We do. A hundred percent. What's going on with Mr. Beast? So Prime Video, they are committed to battle all the streamers. Right now, who do, who do you, who would you guess is the number one streamer on the internet? Service? Just, yeah, video streaming. Um, I would say Netflix. Netflix is number two. They have about 8.5% of all streaming video goes through Netflix. YouTube, which may not be fair, but they do have series and YouTube live TV. They're number one, 9%. And Prime is all the way underneath them with only 3% of all live streaming video. And so they're investing in it. They're going to go from $1.6 billion in entertainment and live sports and live television. Yes. Who do we know? They can have us for like $500,000 a show. (laughs) We'll make a note of that. Uh, They are going to spend $16.3 billion to hopefully become the number one streaming service on the internet. They got the money. It's Amazon. So one of the things that they decided to invest in is Mr. Beast and his reality game show. The the premise was basically kind of like Squid Games. They were going to start with a thousand people and have all of these challenges. And the challenges were supposed to be mental, physical, so anyone could win. And the biggest prize in game show history, $5 million. Wow. So they went That's to crazy. Amazon. Reportedly, they got $100 million. Nothing's ever been con- confirmed. But it's not like Amazon's pr- producing the show. They're just writing a check, and Mr. Beast and his production team are putting it together. And nothing but bad news has come out of there. The complaints are streaming out, and they're streaming out because... Mr. Beast only offered $1,000 if people would sign a document promising they wouldn't talk about it and not sue them. A thousand bucks. Because they doubled the amount of contestants. That's the first thing. Instead of a thousand, it's two thousand. They're only sleeping about four hours a day. They're only getting meals at about 400 calories a meal. And they're getting limited access to water and their medication. Oh, yeah. So because of this limited access and it is reality TV, you have to think of it a little bit, stand a little bit back. Maybe we'll feed them a little less. So they're a little angry. And so maybe there's a little fighting and drama and it makes for good TV. Well, they are getting angry. And so they're stealing food from each other. They're beating each other up for food. They're beating each other up for water. Another thing when Mr. Beast was pitching the show is that it could be anyone. They cast people from the ages of 18 all the way up to 80 because these games should be able to be won by anyone. That's not what's happening. They're 100% physical challenges, and the oh. faster, stronger players are also learning there's no rules. A woman was tackled in the middle of a field during one of the games. Her leg was broken during the tackle. She was eliminated and pulled off the field while they continued to film. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yes. The the nearby hospital, which is in Las Vegas, is reporting multiple injuries from multiple people coming in, either connected to the fact that they haven't taken their medication and they need medical treatment that way, or broken bones, concussions, cuts, scrapes, stitches, you name it. They are all filing into this hospital. 
Okay, so this challenge, what exactly is it? Is it just a series of like climb ropes and jump through hoops? And I mean, is there like a goal at the end? Well, the goal is to win five million bucks and be the last person standing. The oh, only okay. game that was released was the first game of of the series where they took the 2,000 people, split them up into four 500-person teams, and had them play tug-of-war. That's the only okay. game that's been released. But if you imagine, okay. if you're a 65-year-old grandma who was told during the interview process, hey, come here and compete, you have a chance to win, you have zero chance to win at a challenge like that. No, you're not going to win. So, you're going to get toppled over. Yeah. And, and then you're going to break a hip. Right. And then that's going to be it. Exactly. So Mr. Beast people, in the last two weeks, they've gotten win. The people are coming out with their stories. People are actually contacting other producers within Amazon saying, hey, this is happening. Amazon needs to do something. So Mr. Beast's production company reportedly called everyone back and said, listen, we know what's going on. We know this hasn't been perfect. We're learning how about we give you $2,000 to sign this document saying you won't say anything <laughs> and you won't sue us? Not a lot of people are signing. And the worst part about it is they're moving on to phase two of the filming, which is going supposed to be in Canada uh, in the middle of August. And the unions for all the art and production groups in Canada are telling all of their union members, do not work for Mr. Beast because it's unsafe wow. conditions. Wow. Now, there's no way Amazon's walking away from this. They're going to no. figure it out. They'll find somewhere else to shoot. They'll pour more money into it. This is going to happen, but it is not good for Mr. Beast. Wow, Mr. Beast. Well, you know, I did watch his Squid Games, I was, I, and I thought that was fabulous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My daughter and I are totally psyched for this series. I'm not going to tell her any of this but because she loves me. She's in that age range. She loves Mr. Beast. We were really excited for this Amazon series, but they got to get this together. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Do you know how Mr. Beast got to be called Mr. Beast? No, I never. I don't know how he got his name. Really? Um, when he was a kid, uh, he signed on to Xbox. And at that time, Xbox would assign you a, uh, a an avatar and also give you a username. Okay. And so he was given like five choices and he looked up and he said, oh, I'll be Mr. Beast. Wow. And so that's where Mr. Beast came from. And I always thought it was so funny. If they had just added the letter R, he would have had like a completely different career path. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound of your current hype level at the gas pump. But brace yourself for something fuel nominal, because Unleaded 88 is about to take the hype to a whole new level. Unleaded 88 is cheaper, cleaner, and greener than regular Unleaded. Plus, it's homegrown, making Unleaded 88 the clear choice at the pump and totally worth the hype. So pump it up with Unleaded 88, brought to you by Iowa Corn. Hey, it's Kim Commando today. Uh, really so thrilled that you're here with us each and every podcast. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure that you enter to win that $1,000 airline gift card. Because let me tell you, uh, after a few days, it's just not going to be available. And then I'm going to have to give it to somebody else. You know why? Because you're like, oh, I'm never going to win that. I never win anything, Kim Commando. Just so go to winfromkim.com. Once again, that's winfromkim.com. I saw the story. I thought it was really funny. Uh, it was about Apple, Google, and Microsoft. So if you have an Apple phone or an Apple device, the default search, if you search anything, because, you know, you can just pull up Safari and just write something. You can write Mr. Beast in, in the address bar. You don't need anything else. You don't need to go to Google, but it will do a search for you on the Internet. And that defaults to using Google search. Well, Microsoft wanted to be the default Google search for Apple. And they went to Apple and they said, listen, we have a deal for you. You will get 100% of all ad revenue if you make <laughs> Bing the default search result for your Apple phones. Wow, 100%? 100%. We're trying to grow Bing because right now 92% of searches are on Google. 3% of searches are on Bing which shocks me that actually 3% of people use Bing. <laughs> right. and, and you know what Apple told them? No, we'd lose too much money. 
because you don't know how to generate revenue. Also, your search stinks. It does. It so does Microsoft stink. offered them 100% of Bing, and Apple said no. Okay, and instead, Apple paid Google $22 billion. Okay, they turned it down for free and instead spent $22 billion. Isn't that, that's oh. when you go, you know what, it's time to just shut her down. You should shut her down. You know, you know, and they, they probably should have called it bang. Why? Bang. I said a bang. Because like, you know, think about all the guys, you know, I banged, um, I banged Barbie last <laughs> night. Margot, <laughs> Robbie. Yeah, okay. I was just sitting at home. I uh, banged a couple of models. Yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah. it's a little better. But they're number two. You know, Bing's number two, and it's only 3%. Like, nobody else has a chance. We're number two. We're number two. <laughs> they are. They and literally we, are. And Apple said I, they were. You know, I think we're kind of like the, we're, I'm sad to say, we're kind of like the Bing of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Rwanda. Not in Rwanda, baby. <laughs> Not in Rwanda. That's right. That is true. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.